Hi there, thanks for stopping by. My name is Rose Grunewald. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and I'm coming at you today from my Stampin' Studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. Today I am sharing a video tutorial for you for this gorgeous card. I made this card recently in a virtual stamp class where I featured three gender neutral cards that you could send to the special men in your life. The video tutorial that you're about to watch is a clip from that stamp class. I really hope that you enjoy it and let's get stamping. Apparatus for this one friends, our buffalo check. Yeah, Sharon, you're right. We have been having um, a high winds here, so I don't know if there were issues with that because of um, <clears throat> that. Now, I've got a lot of supplies here, everyone. I don't want you um, overwhelmed, not to worry. Um, we're using warm Misty just for one of the sentiments. Isn't the darn set really adorable? Here's the card we're making. We're going to swap into it for something different. <clears throat> Do you get it? So excited to show you this one, absolutely. I've got some tips for coloring your blends here that I think you're gonna Um, all right. We are stamping with Cherry Cobbler and we're gonna use our Buffalo Chat. So let me move some of this stuff out of the way and let's get that layer done first. And then we will talk about some of the other stuff that we're using. Um, because also today, we got quite the mess our coming home bundle. This does not have sentiment, so that is why I had to use uh, warm and toasty for the one I wanted. Okay. <clears throat> Buffalo check background stamp set. It's huge. Huge, huge, huge. The um, blocks, uh, it's actually so big, it's hard for me to get out of my block case that I have, to, especially with Buffalo check. That is so much easier. And I have just put one of the plates on here, and I've got um, here. When I use my Stamparatus, I like to set the stamp behind it uh, so that, actually I'm going to bring this this way because when I'm looking at my camera, uh, Lisa says she needs to break out her buffalo check. It is fabulous. You are so right about that. It's one of my very, very favorite background stamps. Okay, I'm going to ink this up with Mento. And again, this stamp set is so big, you actually want to ink the stamp pad instead of um, the other way around where you leave your pad stationary. And so I'm tapping my stamp with my, instead of tapping my ink pad with stamp. And I'm wanting to make sure I have all these solid places here. So. Now I have just a sheet of cherry cobbler. I'm here and use my magnet to keychainary and I'm just going to stamp this down. Now as soon as I open this up you're going to see why I put this on the apparatus. It's really difficult, some of these big background stamps that have a lot of patterns like this, um, to get a nice crisp day the first time. I have had this issue with the birch background stamp. To be honest with you, I used to so much that it's been a while since I tried any of the other ones. But the apparatus is, everything's in exactly the same place, so all I have to do is stamp again better, not quite there yet, exactly over where I need to be from the previous layers. We're just going to do this until we get a nice good crisp image. And I'm really trying to push down on the areas that, so now this one's getting to be pretty good. I probably need to re-ink my memento, to be honest with you. I have one 
then I reorganized my space and I think I put the wrong one on my desktop to grab for tonight's prep. Looks pretty good to me, you think, huh? Maybe just a bit more here. Again, if you have a nice, fresh, inked memento pen, I'd probably do not have to stamp it this many times. I apparently do not have that. All right. This side. I think I this for now. Move some of my stuff out of the way. I have to tell you, I absolutely hate trying to lines uh, to cut down this buffalo plaid. So I'm going to use my stitched rectangle framelits dies for your little die cutting. Really love the detail of the stitching, especially for the kind of cozy log cabin look for a card that I'm going for. And so I'm going to use the very biggest rectangle. So this is a real big one here and I'm going to do my best to try and line this up so they got a little black ping out there we go in each edge try it if I can easier said than done my friends right okay I'll draw this through Uh, yes, I. What am I doing? Here again. Sometimes I get away with the big shot. All right. Pour out. Now, if you are going to be able to see very well, um, but we've got that stitched detail kind of on the outside. Uh, I think that makes our card look nice and rustic and homey. And that's the look I'm going. It's the small details that make such a big difference, you guys. All right. Take my card base. This is a piece of cherry cobbler by I didn't say. Um, this is five and a half by half. I'm gonna fold it here at four and a quarter. And this is going to be glued down. So let's get that taken care of right away. Oops. We're going to be coloring with our blends next. I want to know which of you, all of you, whoever of you, um, love some amazing tips for your blends. Oh, blends to make it look realistic. I'm, I want to know how you feel with blends so I know which kind of tips you as I'm coloring parts coming up next. I've got this at this hard front and for now that's all we're going to do with our card front because we are going to now get into coloring our log cabin here and our trees. I've got a scrap of Whisper White here. Um, the coming home stamp set portion of the bundle has all these amuses and trees and a car and a wreath and I thought this one looked like a log cabin. Since we are, whoops, I have it mounted. Here it is. Alright. Since we're coloring with our blends, Memento Black Ink. These are alcohol markers and you do not want to use your Memento Stays On ink. And I'm just stamping. We're also going to be coloring in some trees, and I need four of them. These are individual trees, and I mount on the same block. Oh my gosh, every time I look up, I can see that my screen is, and I'm so, so sorry for that, you guys. We've been having issues with our internet for quite some time. Every time I call the internet place, they tell me everything's good on their end, so I'm and yet we have this problem. So we live out in the country and our options for that are a little bit limited. Um, it's not so easy to just drop them and find someone else because frankly we don't have options for someone else. I'm so sorry for these technical difficulties you guys. All right I'm just gonna off that little piece so that this kind can be a little bit easier. I kind of like how this looks right now. 
so that gives me an idea for another project. Okay, lens time. I'm going to give you some tips, you guys. I hope that they're helpful. If you have questions as I'm coloring, you know, I am looking for a cozy, toasty cabin that looks like I want to walk in there and sit by the fireplace. And so when I think of a cozy toast cabin that go in there and sit by the fireplace, I know that the windows in that cabin are glowing. So I went through my blends and found my light and dark daffodil light. Coloring and thinking about shading, which happens a lot with blends, you need a lot about your light source. You want your shading to come from the side that is opposite of your light source. So when I think about the light through the windows, I wanted to go in my cabin where is that fireplace? And in my head, I imagine I walk through this door and the fireplace are here. If the fireplace, I'm going to have more light coming from the inside of this cabin from this side of the house. So here we go. I'm using my Daffodil Delight. Shade areas that I believe the light is coming from a little darker color. These windows are harder to do. So I'm going to use my find here. Aims to edge and coloring the darker color on the side that I believe the light would guide this cabin. And now I'm going to go through with my light daffodil delight and I'm going to color the rest. I want these colors blend really nicely. I like to just go over dark that I already colored and blend it a little bit towards it. I don't want to start constant. I want them to blend together. Things need to be wet to blend together. So by the time I'm coloring these windows, the dark that I colored, so I need to get it wet again and go over that color. If when you like you're losing your dark shading, no problem. And if you need to soften it, you can just throw those edges in. Does this make sense? Anyone have any questions on this? I hope I've explained it really well. Now for this top part and for the door, I have to use my soft suede. So I've got light and dark. And I've got my little window over the top of the door. So dark follow up with my light. All right, so for dark, if these sides are over the top of each other, then we've got a shadow under, it's gonna take a line here and shade one little line underneath each of these pieces. And the peak of my, come in with my light uh, soft suede. Uh, looks like I was oh there we go and then like so when I talk also cutting me off you guys I just really be giving you all these awesome tips and here if my internet connection is interacting <laughs> what I'm saying. I promise I will get this. Okay, now I'll do a little reading here. And then I'll come back and with my light and very ginger and spaces. Coloring and blend. I like to feather words so that you have kind of a soft edge. All right, for the main part of the cabin, I'm using another of my absolute favorite colors, cider and light cinnamon cider. And again, we're gonna think about that same thing. Where shadows, probably under eaves and you know, over the edge. 
edges of the house. And where would we see vices? So probably darker in the corners. Probably darker if we think about the edge of your tree. So I like to do my dark first, and then I'll come back here with my light. Thinking about just going live direct on face instead of with my camera square, if this is an issue, I would love all those of you watching who would like me to disconnect and connect Facebook. If it feels a pain, I feel so horrible that I'm having these technical issues. I really want you guys to be able to get most out of this. Or if you're able to at least make most of what I'm saying on your end, just let me know what you think. And then if you want to go in with these darker, just go in and add some of that shade. And I like to feather it. All right, roof. I'm going to come in with just a little dark slate and just color that roof edge. Easy peasy. And now, super far, we're going to color the trees. Um, for the trees, I'm light mossy mo meadow and dark mossy. So I'm going to come in with my dark here, just a simple one for each tree. And then we're going to shade that up. Okay, so she can get most of what I'm saying. Good, 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 good. Thank you very much for letting me know. It, and we're doing some shading. And you can see lines are very pronounced right now, so I want to feather the, I really like my fine tip way better than that brush tip. But we're gonna feather that in towards our lighter color. Kind of feather that out and do that thing like so. <clears throat> All right. And we're just going to do the same with each of these trees. Color it, get it uh, wet again so that it blends and then feather it towards the other shade. And you come with these different ones, these oak homers. And as you can see, I'm not being very precise. I'm just feather, feathering the color. Oops, we're gonna same here. Good thing I'm my easiest card for last. I didn't realize how long I was talking to you guys. It feels like I'm talking to myself sitting in my studio, of course. What else is new? Does anyone else talk to themselves all the time? I'm using my light and dark soft suede for the tree trunks. There we go. Okay, now it's time to die cut. And we're going to use some of these blends. But the cool thing about this is I can die cut multiple pieces at a time. So we are going to put our cabin here. 
He doesn't want to place. So I'm going to use a post it. Keep down. I want him. And then another two tree button. And they're small. Okay. He's going to stay nicely, but not so much this big guy. Keep that in place. You can use painter's tape. I think it's Robin who told me um, she keeps tape by her die cutting machine so that she can um, keep her pieces down. Okay. Got our cabin. Set that aside. And we're going to have two of our trees. Set that aside. Now we just need to come through and cut the other two trees next. Okay. This one doesn't want to stay, of course. This one also doesn't want to stay. The nice thing about post-its is you're going to be able to kind of set them a couple of times. Keep them in place like that. Okay, my biggest tip is coming up for the blend. So those of you using your blend, I've got a great tip for you for eye cuts, especially if you're coloring them. Right. Um, okay. I don't want to lose these. So let's put these back. Let's do a little bit of stamping on our front. I got a strip of cherry cobbler here and a quarter inches. It's supposed to be by four and a quarter, but it's not. So I will cut that. With my cutting blade, because the skin blade just isn't going to do it. <laughs> um, all right. And um, I wanted to use the sentence from this adorable set that says warm and toasty wishes. After I put together my sample card here, that looks and I knew I had a, a sentiment somewhere that said that. So we're going to stamp that sentiment instead of the wonderful. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty self. All right, Good. a few of those. Screen dimensionals, but um, I have found I'm really loving the kind of more solid, secure yard when I use more dimensionals. Sometimes that middle will sag. Got the strip, warm and toasty wishes to you. We need to the front of our card. Now, the thing I noticed as I went to go putting it together, it's got all these little white pieces around the outside of this card. And when you're when you're using white in your card, that's okay. So um, I wanted to get rid of my little bits, and I learned this tip from our artisan design team stamper Martin Stone. He hates white bits. And so he colors this little border. And I think I'm always going to color the little border because sometimes that border really makes your image pop. If I were putting this um, on a card that had white in it, that little tiny white border would really make it pop and I would keep it. But to be honest with you, this white to me is a little out of place. So I'm just going and, and I'm coloring that very, very tiny first. These little details sometimes that make all the difference in a card, believe it or not. And take time to do some of this. And you'll decide what style you use or no white bits. But for this card, I love the deep, rich, warm colors um, that I created when I got rid of this white. So, I want in. 
I'm going to go to my my um, light crumb cake just to soft around it. I could have used any of the colors in my card here so if you wanted to use your um, and then cider that would work too. I'm just softening that up a little bit with uh, a warm tone. I don't need a whole lot of rest. There's my wow tip for you for your blends and now all we have to do is pop these together so a couple mini dimensionals here on these trees and i'm starting to construct my card front uh, scene here what do you think of this card Think you could send it to your life, your dad, your uncle, your brother, husband, your son, boyfriend, cousin. What do you think? Do you think I helped you to create a wonderful and card? I call them. Maybe it's better to say gender control because I love these cards. I would be so thrilled to get it like this. And John and I absolutely love. Um, the outdoors and rustic, rustic life. So a card like this is right up our alley. There we go. Um, and then this big tree tucked behind everything. little guy I put up on dimensionals. Agree, it looks warm and cozy. Wouldn't you just love to go in here and sit on a big fluffy couch, big fluffy blanket, and have like some bow or something like that? I would. That's what the card looks like to me. You know what I did? I totally forgot. I was supposed to, um, um, braided linen trim around here. I forgot and I already put the lid and we're taking quite a while with these so I'm going to skip it but just know that that is one detail that will also make your is to add in that oh too bad it doesn't have a chimney. I agree that would make a really nice touch. So here is our second card of the night. I have more. Um, it's worth it to sound you guys because this next card um, and it's going to get uh, it's going to get really really fast. Thank you so much for watching my video tutorial. I hope that you found it helpful, that you got some creative inspiration and some great tips and tricks to make your crafting easier. Now, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. You can shop my online store. There's a link to do that at uh, countrycardsbyrose.blogspot.com. And when you place your order, I would love if you use my November 2020 host code VBYQBQJN if your order is under $150. If your order is over $150, you're going to want to skip that code because you'll qualify for some Stampin' Up! rewards. And I want to make sure that you are getting the rewards for free product. Better yet, if your order is over $150, you really should be signing up to be a discount shopper. You'll get 20% off your order and you'll get free shipping on your order and then 20% off of your future orders as long as you remain an active demonstrator. If that's something that you're interested in, um, pop me an email at countrycardsbyrose.gmail.com. All right, thanks again for stopping by and I know that I will be stamping with you soon. Have a great day.